every wrong step could bring disaster as our players attempt to cross this bridge and win a prize package worth over $5,000. So watch now as they brave the dangers to win a fortune on Pitfall. Come on, Sharon, you know what you're doing. You're standing on a Pitfall. And Sonny, that's another Pitfall. And now here comes the man that will help you get across all those Pitfalls today, Alex Trebek. Thank you, John. Hi, everyone. Nice to have you joining us on our program again. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if there are pitfalls on this show, because our current champion has been looking up, 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 never down. She's won over $20,000 in prizes, four consecutive successful attempts at our bridge up there, and she might make it five if she can defeat her current challenger. Let's go down to the floor and meet the players now. Well, first of all, our challenger, who is a news reporter originally from New York, who has revealed a very interesting hobby, Alex. She has an unusual stamp collection, all nude stamps, F-N-U-D-E. Welcome, Sonny Lewis. And our champion, as you say, so far, our all-time champion, Sharon Mason. Hello, ladies. Sonny, good to have you here. Can we take just a moment to ask you about your stamp collection? How many stamps do you have? You mean just the nude stamps? Just the nude ones. Over a hundred. There are a hundred stamps of nudes. You know what's interesting, Alex? A lot of them come from the Arab countries where the women are veiled. So they're there in the nude except for a little veil? <laughs> no. No, that isn't what you meant. No. I know. Okay, <laughs> welcome aboard. I hope you have as much luck as Sharon has enjoyed on our show. Anytime you're right, you'll earn points. They'll appear behind you. You'll acquire pit passes along the way. They come in very handy in that pitfall round. We're going to play a five-point, five-minute game, whichever happens first. You ready? I'm ready. And don't be afraid of her little dog, the pits, there, because... Although he's been a good luck charm so far, you could change things around if you read this audience correctly. For instance, on this question, at a singles bar, what kind of people do you encounter most often, ladies and gentlemen? Interesting people, boring people, drunks, or married people at a singles bar? Vote on that one. Sonny, you won the coin toss. The audience has voted, so you get to consider their answer first. Which is it going to be at a singles bar? Are you single, by the way? No, I'm married. Okay. Have you ever gone to singles bars? Yes, I have. And what kind of people do you encounter there most often? Married people. You do? Sharon? Um, I think this audience has a sort of cynical look about them. I think I'll say boring. Oh, all right. That's telling us a great deal about you also. Audience, at a singles bar, you run into boring people. <laughs> How about that? She's uncanny in her ability to figure out how this audience is going to come up with its preference. Let's find out about your erogenous zones right now. I turn very romantic when someone touches my what? My thigh, my lips, my chest, or my neck. Get a good sampling on this one, I'm sure. We have an equal distribution of men and women and a lot of age representation as well. So, Sharon, tell me. Hmm. Well, of course, they're all good. <laughs> they are? But, uh, I don't know. I think I would have to say the thigh, I suppose. I'll, I'll go for number one. Strange that you are a little unsure right now. Sonny, is I there any doubt in your mind? No doubt at all. Most people would take my lips. Number your two. lips. All right, audience, what did you take? You took your lips. That's what turns you on. One point, one pit pass for each of our players as we continue. If they're going to be your friend, what one essential personality trait must they have? Sophistication, honesty, intelligence, or happy-go-lucky? Which one is it, folks? Votes are in. Sonny. Oh, I'll take number two again. I think most people want honest friends. Sharon? Did she well, take the one you were going to go for? I think that, I think honesty is a good answer, but I also think that uh, a friend, a friend is ver a very attractive person. If they're intelligent, you can discuss things with them. And that makes sense, but I think that Sonny got in with the one that uh, most people in the audience are going to select. Let's see if we're right. Yes, indeed. Honesty, yes. very important. <laughs> On some of the questions, one of the choices is usually the obvious one, and whoever gets to uh, pick first winds up with a point. Your 18-year-old daughter says she's going to move in with her boyfriend. Hmm, what are you going to do? Are you going to forbid her to do it? Are you going to agree? Are you going to say, let's talk it over? Or are you going to cry about it? 18-year-old daughter, just turned 18, and wants to move in with her boyfriend. Sharon? 
Um, I'm going to take the three to talk it over. All right. Sonny? I think most parents would forbid it. Number one. Okay. Sharon, your daughter is how old now? She's almost 13. 13. When she told you she wanted to move in with her boyfriend, what did you tell her? I told her she had to wait till she was at least a teenager. Okay. <laughs> Let's find out how the audience responded as a group to this question. They said they would talk it over. And that means it's all tied up once again. Two points for each of our lady, s and Sonny and Sharon. In the middle of a heated argument, your partner breaks something on purpose. How would you react to that? Would you break something too? Would you walk out? Would you calm down? Or would you continue with the argument? What's it going to be, folks? Tempers are getting very, very high. Sonny. I think most people would be a little frightened by that, and they would walk out. So I'm going to take number two. Particularly if he's a big bruiser, and the thing he broke was the refrigerator. <laughs> Sharon. Hmm, that, that's, a, that's a pretty tough one. Um, is any, any of those could be right. So I think... Um, well, has it based on your personal yeah. experience? Has it ever happened in your home? Oh, yeah, I've broken something. <laughs> and? Um, I think what generally happens is that you just continue with it because by, by then tempers are usually so high that you just carry on. So I would, I would pick four. All right, your husband, I see him in the audience. He's got his hand over his mouth, but I think I caught a grin. Audience, what did you come up with on this? You would walk out giving Sonny the lead right now. We've all run into rowdy crowds, but which one is the worst? Is it the sports crowd, the apres ski grouping, the singles party, or the stag party? The rowdiest group of people. Give me a quick vote on this one. I suspect this will be our last question in this round, unless it ends in a tie. Sharon, you go first. You have an opportunity, if you're right, to make it all even in this game. The, the noisiest? Yep, the rowdiest crowd. The rowdiest crowd would have to be a sports crowd. I'm going to go for number one. Sonny? Well, I've never attended a stag party, but I've always suspected they're really rowdy, so I'm going to go for number four. I think they're very quiet because you're watching the movies. Well, however, uh, let's not dwell on that because we'll get my, me into a great deal of trouble. Audience, a stag party means we have a new champion in Sonny. Come on, Sonny, you're it. You have dethroned Sharon and Pitfall, her pet pooch. Okay. Well, you're not going away unhappy, I know, Sharon Mason, oh, because no. a total of $20,169 in prizes going yes. with you. Congratulations. You are a super player on Pitfall. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Sonny. Good luck. We're going to take a break. We'll see you right after this. that old saying go it's not whether you win or lose it's how you play the game well old pitfall here didn't help our champion Sharon Mason uh, win another match so go away <laughs> Reader, you don't want him around here for you do you no okay see you pup now it's your turn to consider the booby trap sections we're gonna dim the lights you and I are going to turn around and we're going to pay close attention to those eight sections and the booby trap ones, the pitfalls, will light up twice. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. Let's do it. I got them. I got them. I bet you I know what they are. Do you know what they are? I know a couple of them. Which ones? I'll take one and... Uh... You're entitled to another. Use strategy if you're sure of all three. I'm not sure, but I'll take uh, four. Four. I think you're going to worry about that one. I am. Let's go upstairs. up here with a new champion, so I'll run through the rules very briefly. I ask questions, you give me answers. If you're right, you move forward one section at a time, earning $100 in cash. You've got two pit passes to help you, and we're going to allow you 100 seconds to assist you as well. If you're lucky enough to get all right answers and make it to this point here in the time allowed, well, then you enjoy this prize. You and a friend will be on your way to sunny Playa Blanca, Mexico. Your vacation package includes round-trip airfare, round transportation, three weeks double accommodation and meals. Your prize is worth $5,080.
Now, the previous champion, the lady you dethroned, wound up with over $20,000. She did it four consecutive times up here. Maybe you can do the same. 100 seconds on the clock, please. If you had a large proboscis, you'd have a big what? Nose. Nose is right. You can move on to number one. And that's an early pitfall for you. I thought the pitfalls were one, five, and seven. And she had a pit pass for number one, did she? Oh, that's too bad. Here's your question. How many quarters in a baseball game? Four. No, there are none. They're called innings. Uh -huh. The watt is a unit of what? Speed, power, or light? Light. No, it's power. Who used to close his performances saying, good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are? I don't know. Pass. Jimmy Durante, one of the seven wonders of the world is the hanging gardens of where? Babylon. That's right. Stop the clock. Bring her up. 65 seconds. 65 seconds. Mm. The clock will start again when I begin the next question. Okay. Your first time up here, you're probably a little nervous. Yeah. You want to give me the pit pass for number one, which you forgot to give me? Yes. Yeah. Mm. All right. George Washington was one of the first people to wear what? False teeth or bow ties? False teeth. No, bow ties. Only one president in the history of the U.S. has been divorced. Who is it? Pass. Ronald Reagan. What is the substance inside a pencil called? Graphite. Graphite is right. You go to number two. And you're safe. Wool comes from sheep, cotton comes from plants, but where does nylon come from? Plastic. Plastic. It's man-made. You're right. You can move on to number three. That's safe. In a poker game, which is the wild card? Uh, seven? No, anything you want it to be. Beauty may be skin deep, but how many layers of skin do we have? Six, five, or seven? Six. Seven. How many quarts are there in one gallon? Four. Four is right. You can move forward again. $400. Okay. A lack of what vitamin causes scurvy? C. No, vitamin A. If you broke a thermometer, what would spill out on Mercury. Oh, mercury is right. You go to number five. Can I give you this pit pass for number five, even if it's for number four? No, but you can move forward to number five. And I think you're going to go down oh. to number five. And you are, with just one second left, and we're out of time. Let's bring her right back up. Poor Sonny. Got nervous, forgot to give me both pit passes, even though one of them didn't work. Come on back up. When did you realize you had forgotten to give me the pass for number four? When I felt it going down. When you felt it going down. Give me that one now. Let's take a walk down to the end. I said I thought the uh, pitfalls were one, five, and what else did I say? One, five, Eight, and seven? Seven. One, five, and seven. We're going to take a commercial break right now and see if I was right. One, five, and seven. Hey! Football. John, we know that our champion, Sonny Lewis, has a, connection, a collection of nude postage stamps and tends to be forgetful at times. What can you tell us about the new challenger? Well, let's welcome that challenger right now. This fellow loves the action sports. He likes cliff diving, scuba diving, and pitfall diving. He's Paul Grinnell. Hello, Paul. Hope you don't take a dive on our show. Good luck to you. Sonny, ready to go? I'm ready. All right, audience. Try and remember if you've seen this before and tell me what would most likely make a man turn around on the street. A woman in jogging shorts, a woman with a plunging neckline, with a slit skirt, or with tight jeans. What's going to turn a man's head? Think about it for a moment. Make your selection. And Paul, you get to go first. You won the toss. Well, I know what would make me turn around. I'd say the tight jeans. Tight jeans will do it. We see so many of them on television these days. Sonny. I think most people would say a plunging neckline. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where to go on this one because a slit skirt is still unusual enough that it catches your attention very quickly. Audience, what did you go for? Tight jeans. We're being conditioned by the media. Obviously, Paul gets his first hit pass and the lead in the game. People can be very generous, but they are most generous in which areas? In sex, love, finances, or in terms of caring? Most generous people. Sonny? I think people are generous when they're in love. In matters of love. Paul. I would say if you care enough for someone, you could be very generous with them. I'll say number four. That makes sense to me. So we've got one vote for number two, one vote for number four. And you two have uh, forgotten my cardinal rule. When in doubt, go to sex and then go to money. You've left that out, obviously, because you were not in doubt. Audience, what did you select? Caring. And that gives Paul another correct answer. And two points, the lead in the game. Boy, you haven't had a date in six or seven months. Bad news. What would you do? Would you cry about it? Would you drink too much? Would you just shrug 
Or would you start looking around for somebody else? Or someone, period. Haven't had a date in six or seven months. Paul, has this ever happened to you? Yeah, and I looked all over the place, so I'll go with number four again. Okay. Sonny? I think most people would say, this looks like a pretty rowdy crowd. They would drink. Oh, take much. the booze. <laughs> See, that's my attitude. What, whatever. <laughs> you, what, you don't need too many excuses, but whatever happens, drink. Audience, look around. Boy. They're taking the practical approach, obviously. Three points. Paul's on his way to a clean sweep here. We'll find out if it continues as we go to this one. And this is a question that is directed mostly at the girls, but the guys can vote on it and give us their points of view. What is the best opening line you've ever heard? Hey, you're beautiful. I'm very wealthy. Wow. I'm sincere. Give me a reading on that right now. Sonny? I think most people would go for... The uh, best opening line. The best opening line would be, you're beautiful. Given the right phrasing, of course. Hey, you're beautiful. Paul? Well, I like people to think I'm very wealthy, even though I'm not. So I'd want them to think I was wealthy. Wealthy. You know, you could put them all together. Wow, you're beautiful. I'm very wealthy. I'm sincere. <laughs> Audience, you selected you're beautiful. A point for Sonny. She has an opportunity now to come back and tie this match up if she scores another two. The main reason you'd want your daughter to go to college is what? For her education, so she could meet a man, so she could learn about life or have a good time. Main reason you'd want your daughter to go to college. Paul, you're too young to have a daughter. You're not too young to have a daughter, but you're too no. young to be married and have a family, is what I'm saying. I'd say I'd want her to get her education since I'm put, uh, footing the bill. That makes sense, Sonny. Well, that's what I would have chosen, but I have to take something else, so I'll say number three to learn about life. Learn about life. You do that in college, huh? You think. Here we go, audience. What did you say? Our education. Paul gets four points. I won't say anything about my personal experience with regard to this next subject, but uh, let's hear your views. While making love, your partner utters someone else's name. <laughs> what you gonna do about that one? Are you gonna do the same? Are you going to stop right then and there? Will you ignore it or will you start a fight over it? Sonny? I think that would stop most people right then and there. Paul? She's got a fight on her hands. Oh. <laughs> okay. Paul, if you pick up the point on this one, you automatically win the game because you will have reached five points and three pit passes. Audience! You say that would stop it, and that means that Sonny gets the point. Stop right then and there and have a discussion. Oh, we're out of time. We can't have a discussion. Sonny, you wound up with $400 in your uh, session with the uh, pitfall round a while ago. Congratulations to you, Paul. Congratulations right now, because you're the new champion, and you and I are going to hold on to this podium. But we're backing away long enough to present these commercial messages for the folks at home. Pitfall guest accommodation is provided by the Inn at Denman Place in Vancouver. In a class by itself, quiet elegance, careful service, and the experience of a unique hotel, the Inn at Denman Place near English Bay and Stanley Park. Paul Grinnell, our champion, who almost picked up three pit passes in that game. Very impressive, Paul. You were reading the audience beautifully. Now we want to find out how observant you are when it comes to your own private light show. The folks at home uh, will be watching also to see if you're right. So let's dim the lights, turn around, Take a look. Remember, they'll light up twice. Hmm. I think I spotted two of them, but I'm not sure about I the third. I got two of them. Which two? Six and eight. Oh, those were the two I got. I don't know what the third one is, but if you manage to make it across the bridge in safety, take a look over here. This is what you win. For your home, you'll receive a quality dining room suite with table, four chairs, china hutch and sideboard in beautifully crafted oak. And for your floors, 30 yards of luxurious deep pile carpeting. For your kitchen, a large capacity three-door refrigerator freezer, making the value of your prize $5,015. 
I just got the shock of my life. Now, you tell me, folks, you've been looking at this champion. I thought, and I would mentioned a while ago, he's much too young to be married and have a family. And he tells me he's 25 and he is married. Gosh. Well, compared to me, you're very, very young looking. You ready to go? 100 seconds on the clock. Yeah. We're off. How many wheels on a rickshaw? Three, two. If you were a confectioner, what would you be selling? Candy. Candy, that's right. You can move on to number one, and you're safe there with $100. Was the telephone invented by Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell? Alexander Graham Bell. That is correct. You go to number two, and you are safe. True or false, Bushido is the traditional code of the samurai. True. That's right. You go to number three. Oh, that's the pitfall we were wondering about. But you've got plenty of time, so I would say you're in very, very good shape, huh? Listen to this. The film All Quiet on the Western Front is set in which war? The First World War. That's right. Stop the clock. He's got a little over a minute and two pit passes. And he and I were positive almost that six and eight were pitfalls. So it looks like you're in great shape to make it all the way to the end. No clock problem. Was no problem? No. Okay. You feel confident then. On what television show was Gilda Radner a regular? Saturday Night Live. That is correct. You go to number four. One of the famous Wright brothers was Orville. Who was the other? Wilbur. Wilbur is correct. You go to number five. What did George Washington throw across the Potomac River? Pass. A silver dollar. In the metric system, you would buy your wine in what measurement? Liters. Liters is right. You go to number six. You give me the pit pass for that one. So you wind up on number seven. What did television's Marcus Welby do for a living? He was a doctor. He was a doctor. You give me the pit pass for number eight. Get over here. We've got plenty of time. 29 seconds left, and you just wound up winning $5,015. By the way, congratulations to you. Thank you. We're going to come back on our next show, Face the Challenge, and who knows, you might be up here again. Let's wave goodbye to all the folks, and thank you for tuning us in today on Pitfall. Wednesday, Jason is escorted to jail, charged with wife beating and attempted murder. Meanwhile, a ranger discovers the wreckage of Monica's plane crash in a special season premiere of The Colbys. Then Blake and Alexis are consumed by their rage and hatred, while La Mirage is a blazing inferno. On the season premiere of Dynasty, Global's got explosive drama Wednesday, starting at 9.